When I walk into a machine shop, one thing I hate to see, particularly in my shop, is a machine sitting idle. And there's a couple of reasons for that. Maybe I'm programming a big job or I'm quoting a big job. Well, today we're going to talk about Toolpath Labs. It says it can change all of that. And we're going to test it on this small aluminum bracket. We're going to have it both estimate it and then program it. So the first thing you'd want to do is simply drag and drop a random step file, whatever your new project is, right into toolpath.com after you log into your account. And then it's going to start generating a report. Now that it's done generating, let's just click and take a look at the results. It's figured out what size the stock needs to be. It's figured out what tools it would need to manufacture this part. It's figured out which two setups would be needed to manufacture this part. It's developed a strategy or all of the operations. And it's put together an estimate of all the machining time and all the operations combined. All this is customizable to your shop. Now you get down to quantity and it'll automatically do the math for you here. So if I needed a quote for 25, 50, or 100, I've got it pretty quick. If I want to send this into Fusion where I can start making it, then I just want to go to Export into Fusion, copy this code, so to import it into Fusion, what you do is go to the Toolpath app here. Say I want to import in a program. Double click the old one, all right? Paste in the new one. Now he's going to start pulling in not just the step model, but he's also going to pull in the setups, the tools into your library, and all the operations it takes to machine your part. Now let's see how complicated it is to edit this code or operation so you can get a successful part. Pull down the menu and we got two operations that we can see. We got operation one and then operation two. Let's start with operation one. Now he starts off roughing the outside. He really should probably start with some kind of facing op here. So let's say we're going to start off with a facing op and we're going to add multiple depths on that. That's fine. Now he's going to rough the outside, which looks pretty good. Finish the outside. I think if, if I was actually going to do this, this could be just my OCD. But I'm going to come in. I like to do a radius here uh, because then I know my blend's going to be right. That, he's overkill, clearly, right? Okay, and then we got a spot drill, spot drill. You know, honestly, I have carbide drills. So I'm just going to drill and drill. He's going to... He's going to chamfer that, chamfer that, and chamfer that. That's pretty good. See, my tool numbers, they're going to be a problem here now. Now, the first stop I think is pretty successful. The second one, well, I bet he does the same thing where I need to go to some kind of, uh, you know, facing op here. We'll do this facing op, and we'll delete this one. And then on this one, we'll do multiple dips. Okay. Good good facing that this is my world this is where I live right here I'm always editing okay does a 3d uh, you know ramp on that that looks pretty good a contour that looks good chamfer on the inside chamfer on the outside chamfer on the inside that looks fantastic so all in all it took me about a minute minute and a half to get all the operations straightened out now you can see clearly I'm not gonna have a tool zero so I'd want to go to my tool library uh, select this document right click remove my unused tools right and then i'd want to go back and just renumber the tools that i have and now yeah now both of these operations have uh you know start off with tool one yeah that makes a lot of sense really we're ready to design the jaws for the second operation and start tooling up the machine to make the part so all in all, it took Toolpath Labs about two and a half minutes from the time I drag and drop that 3D model into the website until I got the setups, operations, tool list, and good estimate. And then maybe about another minute and a half to edit that so I could put it in the machine and run it with some level of confidence. Now, keep in mind, this was very brief. And maybe this is not enough for you to make a decision on whether Toolpath Labs is right for you. So in the next video, what we're going to do is do a deeper dive. We're going to talk about how does it develop estimations? How do you update all of those numbers so you can get good values at the end of it? And how you pick your toolpath library and build it and set feeds and speeds and materials and such. So 
Maybe when you see all of that, you'll have a better idea whether it's right for your shop or not. In the meantime, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss that video. And we'll catch you next time, and we'll definitely see you at IMTS.